Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This fairy tale is called The Goblin Pony. There was once an old woman named Peggy, whose daughter and husband had died, leaving her to look after her three grandchildren alone. The eldest was a boy who was of the age to want to be out and about by himself, having an eye for the girls. The next grandchild was a daughter, who was kind and hard-working and helped Peggy to look after the family. The youngest grandchild was a little boy called Richard, of whom Peggy was especially fond. One particular cold, dark night, Peggy felt a chill of fear spread through her old, old bones. She gave her grandchildren a solemn warning. She said, don't stir from the fireplace tonight. For the wind is blowing so violently that the house shakes. Besides, this is Halloween, when the witches are abroad and the goblins, who are their servants, are wandering about in all sorts of disguises, doing harm to the children of men. Why should I stay here? said the eldest of the young people. No, I must go see what the daughter of old Jacob, the rope maker, is doing. She wouldn't close her blue eyes all night if I didn't visit her father before the moon had gone down. I must go catch lobsters and crabs, said the granddaughter. If I don't, I'll have nothing to sell at market tomorrow, and we will stay hungry at supper time. Not all the witches and goblins in the world shall hinder me from going out tonight. So they are determined to go on with their business or pleasure and scorn the wise advice of old Peggy. Only the youngest child hesitated a minute when she said to him, You stay here, my little Richard, and I will tell you beautiful stories. But he wanted to pick a bunch of wild thyme and some blackberries by the moonlight and ran out after the others. When they got outside, they said, The old woman talks of wind and storm, but never was the weather finer, or the sky more clear. So, how majestically the moon stalks through the transparent clouds. Then all of a sudden, they noticed a little black pony close behind them, which none of them had heard approach. Oh, oh, they said, that must be old farmer Valentine's new pony. Perhaps it's escaped from the stable and's going down to drink at the pond. My pretty little pony, said the eldest, patting the creature with his hand. You mustn't run too far. I'll take you to the pond myself. With these words, words he jumped on the pony's back. He was quickly followed by his sister who reached down a hand and helped little Richard, saving himself a stride, for he didn't like to be left behind. And off they set to the pond, trotting along they were, under the beautiful moonlight. On the way, they met several of their companions, and they invited them all to mount the pony, which they did. And the little creature did not seem to mind the extra weight, but jogged merrily on. The quicker it trotted, the more the young people enjoyed the fun. They dug their heels into the pony's sides and called out, Gallop, little pony, you have never had such brave riders on your back before, I am sure. In the meantime, the wind had risen again. The waves began to howl. But the pony did not seem to mind the noise, and instead of going to the pond, cantered gaily towards the seashore. Richard began to regret not going to gather his thyme and blackberries. The eldest brother seized the pony by his mane and tried to make it turn round, for he remembered the blue eyes of Jacob, the rope maker's daughter. But he tugged and pulled in vain, before the pony galloped straight into the sea, till the waves 
met its forefeet. As soon as it felt the water, it neared and capered about with glee, advancing quickly into the foaming billows. When the waves had covered the children's legs, they repented their careless behaviour and cried out, the cursed little black pony is bewitched. If only we had listened to old Peggy's advice, we shouldn't have been lost. The further the pony advanced, the higher rose the sea, and at last the waves covered the children's heads, and they were all drowned, along with the little black pony. The end. Well, that's an interesting tale and interesting that it's called a goblin pony because it's not what we would call them, but I do understand why they call it this, of course. Interesting. I do know that there is an ending where it goes to morning and Peggy does go looking for the children, um, but unfortunately she never actually finds the children. Um, they are lost forever, they've just vanished and no search parties could find them either but it is said that as Peggy was going home and the moon was coming out that she saw a little black pony coming towards her springing and curvetting in every direction and when it got quite near it neared at her loudly and galloped past her quickly and that in a moment it was out of her sight and that was the last that was seen of the little black pony ever again in those lands. But like I say, it's an interesting story. We wouldn't necessarily, we wouldn't call it a goblin pony. It'd be called something else, but I'm sure you all know that it would be called a kelpie. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate it. Please leave a like, share if you can. And consider subscribing to my channel because it does really help. Many blessings.